Yesterday, I made this tweet that illustrates how fast the space of AI is moving. So about a year ago, if you all recall, we had this really big demo from the OpenAI folks where Greg, the presenter of this section of the demo, took a sketch of a website from a notebook, took an image of that and uploaded it to GPT. And GPT was able to create a website or create working code, functional code to create this website. So at the time, this was really novel. And fast forward into 2024, and what you see on the right is Replit Agent which is this new coding agent introduced by Replit. And this coding agent can generate entire websites and deploy those websites for you. In one year, literally went from prototyping websites to building deployable apps with AI. And this is why I tweeted, this is happening so fast. And I obviously teased, are we going to have AGI in 2025? I don't truly believe we will. But I was curious to hear what people had to say. So the point here is that things are moving so fast. Maybe in one year, we have these AI systems that can not only deploy, but can also maintain code. All those things are important for maintaining software. So what I would like to do in this video is to go through the latest of all these coding agents. There are so many tools right now for coding and go through a demo or two on the Replit agent and why this is so significant and why I'm so excited about it. So in order for you to get access to Replit Agent, here I have early access, you need to set up an account inside of Replit. And what you do is you need to have a membership. So you need to pay for a subscription. So you can click any of the examples provided here, or you can just create your own. And so I need to show you an example from scratch. So that's why I choose to do this one. I'm just going to select this one, and then I'm going to start building. It's configuring the Replit website here. Then it says it's thinking. So all of this takes a little bit of time, obviously. So it says, absolutely, let me propose what we will build for you. And so what it does here, it is expecting you to query it. So you query it with some desired goal. What is the website that you want? You want to be as clear as possible. Don't put too many instructions here because you can always give the model feedback and progressively build your application. So try to give it something at a high level of what you want to build. What it does, it's going to design a plan for you. So that's the first step, right? So it does some planning. So this is why in this channel, we have spoken a lot about planning as an important capability of the language model and eventually these agents. And so the use case here is to develop web apps and it's going to use Flask, Vanilla JS, and PostgreSQL. So it's always going to use this particular stack for some reason. I don't know if it actually works for Node.js. I haven't really tested or using other types of web frameworks, but it does tend to lean towards Flask and Postgres and Python in general. So it says here, the site will collect full names and emails, store them in a database and feature a modern professional design. Would you like to review the details of this plan or make any changes. Uh, then it offers you some changes here. I'm not going to add any additional features. I'm just going to keep the original plan. And this is really nice because like, it's probably suggesting to you certain things that this type of systems will have that are very common to implement within the systems. So it's making recommendations, which I think is a really neat feature because if you don't have too much experience with developing websites, then I think this would be pretty useful so I can approve the plan and then it goes into building that initial prototype. So you can see here it's generating the main, all the code for that, the routing, and then it's generating the base HTML. This is going to be for the actual website, how it's going to look. I can see here that it's using Tailwind CSS. You can see here Tailwind CSS. So it's definitely going to have some neat design. And you can see all the different steps that it's taking, right? It's creating all of these important files, creating the JavaScript here, putting it under a static folder and it's creating the static folder here on the left. And now it's installing some important libraries. It is installing Flask, the framework here to build this website and so on. Obviously, to understand this, you need a little bit of knowledge on the actual libraries. So I have experience building web apps. So this is pretty straightforward for me, but someone that's coming here and looking at this for the first time, they might not know what's going on. But one way to tell is just, just look at the files that it's generating here in the order that it is generating in. They do have an AI as well. So it's right here on the left-hand side that explains code for you. So it tells you exactly what each 
part of this project is and what it does. So that's something that you can use as well, right? To answer questions about your code and assist you in your thinking. So besides the agent itself, you also have that functionality. You can also do code search like normal things. Anyway, so we're gonna go here and look at all the code that was generated and then it renders a preview, okay? And look at this. So this looks really nice. Obviously it can be modernized in terms of design. And so here at the bottom, it has feature one, feature two, feature three. These are things that you will change. And then you have like this join wait list. And the idea of this application is that it's going to use a database to keep track of any registrations, right? Because this is a wait list. So this is going to be a live wait list. So we can always test it, but we are going to allow the agent to finish. So you can see here it's doing all of these steps. So right now it's like 15 different steps that it has taken it's editing files it's restarting the server it's testing things it's taking screenshots and just iterating on this website until it has something a really good working prototype that i can test on so it took about five minutes here to reach to this point and it's telling me it took about 22 different steps it's telling me to please visit test db route and let me know if it returns a success message indicating that the database connection is working so this is something i need to test and can i go here and just do test underscore db. And again, this is something that probably like someone that's starting from scratch with coding probably would not find easy to understand. But this is what I was saying. I think even with this advanced agent, having a little bit of knowledge of programming and building web apps will be super helpful. And you can see here, it says message database connection successful, success true. That means that we are connected to our database. And then I will tell it, yes. So I interact with it, right? I'm collaborating with it. I'm giving it the information it needs because it will test and make sure everything is in order to generate the full application. So it says deploying project. So now we are at the point where we can deploy the project, I guess. And then it says the initial prototype was completed. So it says completed just now. And then it asked me for some feedback. So I think it'll be good to give it feedback just so that the team has this feedback that it can use. So I can look at the website here. So this is the main website. And I'm actually going to test this before I deploy. I'm going to go here and say Elvis. And then I'm going to join waitlist. It says, thank you for subscribing. So I see this pop-up message. It's probably working. I can look at my dev tools as well here at the bottom. And I can see if there's any errors or any warnings. It looks like it's working. So I believe now I can deploy this. So I can go here and then I can run all the deployments. It's quite easy. I just go to set up your deployment. And then here, I'm going to leave this as the default. Also, that it's just going to stay like that. And all of the secret keys, that's important for the app to actually function. And I'm just going to deploy this. It takes a bit of time to deploy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause and come back when it's finished. So it finished the deployment. It took about two minutes to fully deploy the app. And I can access the app here. So I can go to here. And you can see that it's right here. It looks like it's live. And now I can test it. I can go here and I can test it. These are all fake emails, but anyways, I'm just testing. And then I'm going to say join waitlist. This can be improved. This is the first iteration of the app, but I'm alerting the user that they have subscribed. So I'm going to click OK. So how do I know that what I just did within the website, the live web application is working? How do I know it's working? So I can go to my database. So one thing you can do is you can click because there is a database, there is a live database. And so I'm going to go and look for that database. It should be a PostgreSQL database. So I've clicked on that. You can find it here. So you can see here that it has one table, okay? And then I can look for the subscriber table here. I'll click on that. And then you can see this one was the one I used at testing time. And then this is the one that I submitted when I tested the application. So I know it's working. This is really impressive. And I did this in roughly about less than 10 minutes for sure, but I had to wait for the prototype to be created. I had to wait for all these steps, but just interacting with the model a few times, I was able to create a fully working website and deploy it. And it has this database and I'm collecting information. This is pretty incredible and pretty powerful. So this is why I'm really excited about all of these coding tools. I'm gonna to finish the video there. I would love to hear your thoughts about this, what you think about Replit Agent and the future of coding agents in general. Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm going to show you 
an app that I built yesterday using this Replit agent. I did a few iterations of this, but it took me about like roughly about 15 minutes to develop the application. So I'm going to show you here the end product. So this is what it looks like. Well, at least this is the most that I could have done in that 15 minutes. I haven't finished the app, but basically what I wanted to do, I used the agent to create this Hacker News replica. And one thing about Hacker News, as you may know, it's really hard to search for information, find information. So one way I would love to use Hacker News is to be able to search for things that I'm interested in. So this is scraping posts from Hacker News. So these are live posts with the scores and it has the link and everything else. And another feature that I'm interested in building is bookmarking. So when I bookmark, I want to bookmark into my own database. And all of that is handled for you by the Replit agent. So this is a fully working website and it even has its own address that you can go and use. I'm not going to share that address obviously here because I am using my own own OpenAI API keys. So for now, I'm just going to keep it to myself. But anyways, the way how this works is I can go here and I can then search for any post that include the word LLM. So I'm going to search it. And you can see here this particular post, it does mention LLMs here, hardware acceleration of LLMs. And so I could quickly search for all of these Hacker News posts, and then I would be able to bookmark them for later reading or whatever. So that's kind of the idea. And this search, by the way, is powered by a language model. So this is powered by OpenAI. AI. This is why I was using an OpenAI API key. So the way this works is I basically prompted. Everything is prompt. I did not touch code at all. Now the bookmark stuff doesn't work again because that's where I maxed out, but it was basically already completing it. And I only had like the database part to complete, but everything looked like it was working. I think I could have completed it in like five minutes. So I want to show you here the code that the agent generated. So all of this is the working code. You can see this is a Flask application. It has like a scraper. So this, all this code that you see here was generated by the agent. Then we have some sort of scheduler as well. Then this is the main code. And in the main code, we have all the functionality here. You know, this is the index of the website. This handles the, the routing part of the website. So when I'm bookmarking and all of that stuff, and when I do search, for instance, it will be handled by the by the application. So this one, again, uses OpenAI, and it even gives you like a dialog box where you can enter your OpenAI API key. I think that was amazing because it's already part of the process. And because maybe a lot of people will leverage these LLMs, it made sense to have something like that. And then this part was interesting to me because I actually just prompted it. I want to build this search functionality and I want you to use GPT-4. So it created all of this code and it even created the system prompt for me. So this system prompt that you see here is not something I created, the agent created that. So I thought that was really interesting because most of the time you will be creating these yourself. And if the agent has a capability to do this, I think this is amazing. And then it has this kind of user role where it's going to take in the search query and take all of the titles and it's just going to search, basically going to compare this query with the Hacker News post and then return what matches. So this is left up to the language model. We can be more specific about how we want the search to be done, but I never touched this code, so I just left it as is. And that's about it. Then you have this bookmark functionality that I was working on, but I couldn't complete it because again, I maxed out. And finally, this is how it looks. And I showed you how it works. I'm still experimenting on this. This is directly connected to my API keys. One interesting thing that I can do here is if I want to make this public and if it's useful for other people, let me know in the comments. I can make this public. And then what I can do here is kind of create like an additional input box where you can input your own API keys. So you can use your own API keys to do the search. Anyways, I'll play around more with this app because I do have a few ideas on how I want to use this. 